I'd like to start this morning just by introducing Matthew Harper. Matthew is one of the board members of Simulation Australasia and he'll be chairing our plenary session this morning. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks, Deanna. Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to day three of the Australasian Simulation Congress for 2021. As uh, Deanna said, my name is Matthew Harper and I'm a board member of Simulation Australia. I'm coming to you this morning from Canberra. Uh, the traditional land of the Ngunnawal people. And I'd like to extend my um, appreciation of the Ngunnawal people and the contribution they make to our lands and the contribution all Indigenous people make to the lands on which we all come from today. It's my incredible pleasure to introduce our first speaker for today. Dr. Kaya Antley is a senior lecturer in industrial design at the School of Engineering at Deakin University. She's also a researcher at the Cadet Virtual Reality Training and Simulation Lab, where she leads the GLAM, which is the Galleries, Libraries, Archives and Museum theme. Kaya is interested in the intersection of human-centred design, virtual museums, gamified extended reality, 3D printing, space exploration and futures thinking. Uh, Kaya has a Master's in Industrial Design and her PhD in Museum and Heritage Studies both from the University of Lubinia, and I got that wrong. In 2015, she completed her Endeavour postdoc at the University of Canberra, and Kyra is also an alumina from the Southern Hemisphere Space Studies Program at the International Space University and the University of South Australia. Kyra is here to speak to us on the meaningful gamified extended reality experience for astronauts on long duration space missions. Thank you, Kyra. Thank you, Matthew. I hope uh, you hear me loud and clearly. Uh, I'm going to share my screen first. So now you should be able to see my first slide. Um, so thank you, everyone, for um, this opportunity uh, for inviting me to speak at the Australasian Simulation Congress. Um, so let's start uh, with the next slide and hope everything will be okay in the technical um, perspective. So I would uh, wish to begin by acknowledging the Boomerg people um, of the Kulin Nations, the traditional owners of the land on which I live in Melbourne. Uh, I pay my respects to the local people and to their elders, past, present and future. So my discussion today will be focused on how to apply extended reality serious games for health and well-being of astronauts and people living and working in space on the moon and Mars. I will introduce a proposal how meaningful and engaging gamified experiences could be introduced and integrated into a daily exercise routine as part of a gym equipment and how museums and heritage institutions could contribute with their content in order to support identity, emotional and mental needs of people in isolated, confined environments away from their families and friends. After a year and a half uh, in the global pandemic, most of us are now all uh, well aware how important mental health is in isolation. Speaking of space, digital transformation, advanced manufacturing and industry 4.0 as critical enablers of the entrepreneurial innovation driven movement of so-called new space uh, are democratizing the previous closed space sector. So the space industry is rapidly changing and growing uh, area that requires a transdisciplinary approach from both STEM, so that means science, technology, engineering and maths, and has humanities and social sciences. So up until now, less than 600 people have been to um, space since uh, 1961, and only 12 have walked on the moon between 69 and 72. With the rapid commercial development in space flight, including reusable rockets, long duration human expansion beyond the low Earth orbit uh, towards the moon and Mars may become a reality in near future. After 20 years of operation, the International Space Station, the ISS, a scientific lab in the size of a football field, may soon be retired due to the deterioration of the equipment and growing cost of repair. 
NASA has recently announced to, to focus its activities towards the Moon and Mars and leave the low Earth orbit uh, where the ISS is orbiting, now about 400 kilometers from Earth, uh, to commercial space stations such as Axiom, um, Orbital Reef and Starlab. There are also Chinese Tiangong currently being built and planned Russian orbital space station. So through the uh, new Artemis program, uh, you know Artemis is an ancient Greek goddess who is also a sister of Apollo, the name of the first lunar mission that put the first man on the moon. So the Artemis, which is uh, intending to land the first woman and the first person of color on the moon by 2025. NASA is planning its own space station, so-called Lunar Gateway, and this will uh, not be orbiting Earth, but the Moon, providing the support for permanent uh, outposts on the lunar southern uh, pole, uh, as well as it will be an analog for future Mars missions, uh, planning for the 2030s and later. You may ask why going to space with so many problems on Earth? Most of the human space missions are focused on scientific research, from medical to environment research, to better, underst to better understand our climate uh, change. However, there is also a growing national security as well as economic interest in relation to resource utilization, such as asteroid mining, uh, in-space manufacturing, using uh, advantages of microgravity, and after all, space tourism. So the success of human space flights activities also depends on the successful development of reusable rockets where SpaceX is leading the way with their Starship vehicle currently under development. This will be the largest rocket ever developed by humans so far with in-space refueling capable to carry humans to Mars. To better understand the size of this space industry, as per Deloitte, the uh, global space economy is currently work, worth of over uh, 420 billion American dollars in 2020 and is forecasting to grow to over uh, 1.1 trillion by um, the 2040. Although Australia contributes approximately 1% to the global space sector, this is expected to grow at 7.1% per annum over the next five years. And the Australian Space Agency goal, um, the agency was established in 2019, is to triple the size of Australian space economy by 2030, targeting um, 20,000 uh, new jobs. So with those numbers, uh, we will see more people being engaged with the space sector, also in terms of simulation and robotics. Moreover, uh, we will see uh, more humans living and working in space in the next decades who will need to not only well um, designed vehicles and habitats, but also health and well-being support to sustain the work-life balance uh, in such extreme environments. Human space exploration presents not only technical challenges, but also health and well-being associated concerns. Um, if you want to go to space, to thrive, as they say, and not only to survive, all aspects of human life have to uh, be considered from working, sleeping, uh, eating, uh, hygiene, as well as exercising to leisure time and play. Our research proposal is focused on the leisure and play time to be connected into a daily exercising routine in order to maintain health and well-being. Why physical exercises, uh, exercising is that important is, become, is because uh, weakening and deterioration of muscles in microgravity. And this is one of the most prevailing concerns of human space exploration. As per NASA, studies uh, have shown that astronauts experience up to 20% loss of muscle mass on spaceflight lasting 5 to 11 days. Another point, as a countermeasure, astronauts on the International Space Station, for example, spend 2.5 hours per day just exercising. The current equipment is relatively heavy, um, bulky, it produces vibrations 
uh, there's caused some issues with other um, scientific equipment and uh, sometimes fails. When going to the Moon and Mars, such equipment will need to be more robust and lightweight. But what we are mostly interested in is um, that astronauts also report that exercises are monotonous and they soon lose motivation to interact with the equipment. So if you've ever been to the gym, you may be familiar um, with this by yourself. So the question is, how can we create more engaging exercise equipment and a program using gamified extended reality experiences? By extended reality or XR, I mean all levels of reality from augmented reality, mixed reality to the total immersion of virtual reality. I also like to include 3D printing as a part of physical reality within this continuum, mainly as a materialization of 3D computer models uh, in forms of props uh, for more haptic experiences. Extended reality has already been tested on the International Space Station, and the recent article by NASA shows a variety of different ways how these technologies improve the work and life um, on the ISS. For example, VR is used for remote operations of robots. Or on the other side, AR assists with the maintenance of the equipment. The European Space Agency is um, already exploring how immersive experiences can increase motivation to exercise. So further from creating immersive gamified experiences for motivating astronauts to exercise, we're also asking ourselves, can the XR content integrated into the exercise routine also support mental health and well-being of those people away from Earth on a deeper level. In order to achieve this, we propose the implementation of museum and heritage experiences and serious games to assist humans being more connected with Earth as their home and to provide a sense of familiarity and belonging. This aspect of identity will become even more crucial on Mars as these crude missions will be even longer, at least a year and a half and probably more. Another aspect is also important to mention from mental health perspective is that staying on Mars, we will not be able to communicate with people on Earth in real time due to the signal delay. So imagine sending a video, audio, or just a text message to your family it will take between 6 to 44 minutes to get the reply from Earth, depending on where the two planets are rel relative to each other. We're currently uh, teaming up with the psychologist, Dr. Anahita Nazami from the UK, who has developed a meditative program called VR Overview Effect and who works in the area of space health. We're also working with a colleague from Deakin University's School of IT, Dr. Baharev Nikisa, who works in the intersection of applied AI, wearable sensors and mental health, as well as with space designer Kaori Betzeril from space tech startup Darium Labs in Mexico and the um, founder of the Interplanetary Creative Society. She specialized uh, in strategic design and uh, user experience design and evaluations. Our concepts adopt a holistic um, growth strategy called EPIC resilience. In this case, EPIC stands for uh, emotional, physical, intellectual, and creative resilience. The framework has been developed by an Australian inventor and futurist living in San Francisco, Sally Dominguez. And in collaboration with Sally, we are intending to create workshops addressing this topic on a co-creative way. So the emotional uh, resilience can be achieved by um, connecting with family and friends, uh, the, term, uh, the team and the broader community, uh, physical, uh, in our case, by exercising, 
Intellectual resilience by gaining new knowledge and staying curious through heritage serious games. Um, and as a result, humans off Earth could stay creative. As we know, isolated environments um, by lacking in pulses of inspiration, we usually received from external environments, such as going to the nature or uh, engaging with uh, culture activities. My previous work in digital heritage and virtual museums and serious games uh, consists of a variety um, of different areas, including natural and cultural heritage. As a part of my PhD about uh, 10 years ago at the University of Ljubljana, I was exploring the use of 3D technologies for the interpretation of uh, industrial design museum objects. One of the scenarios was uh, to create a serious game um, by which users uh, assembled a modular kiosk from the 1960s, uh, an iconic Slovenian design, which is also a part of museum collection. Uh, in MoMA, New York. Here at Deacon, we are, um, we've created a mixed reality dinosaur experience, the Little L project, in collaboration with uh, the uh, National World Museum and interdisciplinary, um, uh, in, inter, uh, internationally uh, recognized paleontologists. So it was a really interdisciplinary team. In this co-creative serious game, museum visitors were invited to color a virtual dinosaur based on their informed scientific decisions or uh, by using their creative license. We're also working with our center Melbourne on a mixed reality project featuring 3D digitized Dame Joanne Sutherland's costumes. And the aim of uh, this experience is uh, to develop uh, a mental health training for performance and um, uh, some sort of an experience for um, theater goers or um, uh, museum visitors. Aligned with uh, Geelong UNESCO City of Design, we are exploring how gamified extended reality experiences could be used to communicate design and manufacturing heritage of post-industrial cities, including uh, Geelong here in Australia and Coventry in the UK. Last but not least, uh, with the Early Watercraft Global Initiative uh, by my colleague Miran Eric, our team is also looking how this dispersed human heritage could be interpreted using serious games uh, in collaboration with Indigenous people. Our digital heritage projects are um, developed in, um, through a strong interdisciplinary collaboration between engineers, cultural institutions, heritage interpreters, designers, psychologists, uh, and always with subject matter experts, depending on the team uh, we are working on. This can then be applied to projects within the space sector on Earth uh, as well as off Earth. Up until recently, museums were mostly involved in space exploration through collecting and exhibiting space-related objects, including technical heritage and memorabilia. In relation to audience engagement, the main purpose of space museums is still often seen as a vehicle for STEM outreach. A good example of a virtual reality museum experience related to human space explorations is the uh, Columbia Command Module VR experience in the Apollo 11 exhibition at the Powerhouse Museum in Sydney. I was lucky enough to uh, interact with it in 2019 during the celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. On the museum and applied uh, on the Museum of Applied Arts and Sciences website, you can find uh, a very informative behind the scenes article about the design and development of this experience created by Dr. Andrew Yip in, um, his, and his uh, interdisciplinary research group at the 
um, uh, iCinema Centre for Interactive Cinema Research at the University of New South Wales. The regional objects of Columbia is displayed at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum in Washington, DC. And because it was not possible to bring it to Australia for the exhibition, it had been decided to create a VR experience instead to bring the story to the Sydney audience. As per the article, the team was aware of the 3D digitized version of the R artifacts um, accessible on the Smithsonian online collection. Fortunately, the Smithsonian was supportive and supplied the 3D model to be used in VR. The experience was developed in Unity 3D uh, game engine and uh, visitors were able to interact with it using Oculus Rift S. So today, various geologists, archaeologists, lawyers, architects and heritage professionals are exploring ways to preserve both geological and human heritage in uh, outer space and on celestial bodies to ensure a sustainable environment and inspiration for future generations. For example, for all moonkind, permanent observer to the United Nations Committee on the peaceful uses of outer space is working on a moon registry of all human heritage on the moon, such as lunar landers and uh, astronaut personal objects. One of the main aims of the For All Moonkind in initiative is to uh, protect the first human footprints and lunar landers from the Apollo era before we return to the moon in the next years. Internationally recognized leader in space archaeology, Dr. Alice Gorman from fin Flinders University, uh, is, all, um, is also, uh, among others, uh, investigating space debris, uh, but uh, from the archaeological perspective. There have been proposals for pop-up uh, intergalactic museums uh, and even to create a satellite collection storage in order to protect and preserve museum objects from climate change consequences here on Earth. So going back to our initiative, um, it's a great um, platform for students to learn uh, their skills in terms of uh, engineering, um, problem solving and creativity. So at Deakin um, School of Engin Engineering, I teach human centered design and product development. And in previous trimester, we have started uh, with a team of four international uh, master students who are working on a project titled Gamified Exercise Equipment for Astronauts Living and Working in Space as a part of their uh, final year project running across two trimesters. On their right, uh, on your right side, uh, you can see a few images um, from user research and concept generation from the student team. They will continue with some iterations and detailed design next year. But uh, during our summer trimesters, just starting uh, this week, uh, a similar design challenge has been introduced to 24 masters and undergrad students who are undertaking an engineering design unit as part of their course. As part of research proposal, um, we also intend to provide an opportunity for PhD students. So if anyone in the audience is interested, uh, feel free to, to reach out. How do we know these ex heritage immersive experiences can support mental health of people living and working uh, in space? To understand this, we are also proposing to design uh, and develop a real-time monitoring system to detect the motion and well-being of astronauts using lightweight wearable sensors. Uh, and then how to recognize human emotional states. Emotions, um, emotion is complex, um, a psycho psychological, um, physiological phenomena and um, contains many nonverbal cues. In general, responses can be divided into internal um, um, physiological responses and external physical responses. 
physiological responses can be detected through heart, uh, brain, um, electrodermal or respiration activities. On the other side, physical responses can be detected through facial expression, body gesture and change in voice. So these provide a non-invasive and uh, unabitrative way to collect physiological signals. Uh, they can also be utilized while carrying out uh, our daily life activities. And mainly we are uh, talking here about collecting data through wearables such as wristbands and headsets. These data can also be correlated with quantitative and qualitative data collection through surveys and interviews. So here you can see uh, a couple of projects of Baharev and uh, her colleagues uh, here at Deakin. Um, they um, are related to smart wearable sensors. For example, um, they, they were uh, looking at emotional recognition while watching videos using smart sensors and facial points. Another study is investigated mental workload of office workers in different environments with, diff with a different temperature uh, using uh, smart sensors. They were also exploring stress detection of drivers while driving in uh, different scenarios and studying driver readiness using psychological signals. The team also developed Palmwise scanner as a self-service machine. So previous studies by other researchers suggest experiencing natural landscape and VR can reduce stress of people working in such environments as uh, confined, extreme, uh, isolated environments. This was tested uh, on analog missions in Hawaii and in Canberra. And um, for our project, we first are planning to develop a digital heritage VR pilot um, this content is based on the findings of previous digital heritage projects um, and also Anahita's work on the VR overview effect, which is available um, on, the, on their website if you're interested. Um, in collaboration with uh, GLAM institutions, these um, are galleries, libraries, archives and museums, heritage content um, to be experienced as by astronauts and people living and working off Earth could potentially be created using their online repositories. One example could be uh, the Smithsonian online collection as used in the Columbia VR project or any other collection of the digital, um, 3D digital and digitized objects. For the data collections, um, we are targeting at least 120 participants at uh, five pre-identified analog missions sites um, and hopefully also on the ISS over one uh, year. And uh, to conclude, uh, this will provide us with a good understanding how immersive heritage serious games could support mental health and well-being, not only of astronauts, but also as a spin-off, as a space spin-off, such experiences uh, could be used in prisons, hospitals, retirement villages, and other isolated uh, living and working environments, such as Antarctica, oil rigs, and mines. And again, after the global pandemic, uh, we may all now uh, know uh, from our own experiences how important it is to maintain mental health and well-being while being isolated in more or less uh, confined spaces for longer periods of time. Uh, thank you so much. Well, thank you, Kai. That was absolutely fascinating. Really enjoyed that talk. We've got a couple of, of questions coming up, but um, as someone who doesn't go to the gym because I lose motivation before I get there, um, is, how, even with the um, extended reality into uh, a space-style environment, how do you provide, I guess, the this, this stimuli for people to get, I guess, that feeling of well-being if it's maybe missing because they're on their own and they're having to use this to get the, the stimuli of doing the exercise? 
how do we get how do we get the idea of feeling that well-being that endorphin rush that i i hear you do get after you exercise don't experience it much but i hear it happens yeah, I, I do exercise. Um, so I used to go to the gym um, every morning bef before work. And the first day, the pandemic started 20, 20, uh, 2020 March. That's so far away. Um, I actually started running uh, because the gym was um, closed and uh, I needed to go to the nature. So that was the first thing, being isolated, um, working from home. Uh, was just to go outside um, and this connection with nature is definitely important. Um, then your question um, of motivation, um, basically we are talking about two projects that are sort of integrated and there are various level of the um, projects that we are intending to work and the first level is um, um, a virtual reality experience that could also be some sort of a more meditative way um, and not as uh, gamified um, because gamification provides another level of interaction. So uh, with that next level, um, we are intending to um, add more interaction and that could be then connected with uh, exercising. Um, as mentioned in the presentation, exercising in a confined space in some sort of a gym equipment will definitely be needed um, in those um, isolated, confined environments. Uh, but the question is, um, do we want, do we need uh, another um, treadmill or another bicycle? But can we get more creative? And um, we can see in virtual reality, um, so-called fitness um, uh, sector, uh, virtual reality is providing uh, some sort of unique or very interesting or even different ways of um, um, exercising or just start moving. Um, and they are developing really fast. Um, so, um, some of them are very complex. Some of them are really, um, you know, easy to go. There are lots of uh, interesting um, content already available on virtual reality platforms. Um, and we are different. So uh, I think it's important to think about what sorts of content. I mean, everyone say, and I think still a bit true, uh, content is a king. <laughs> Uh, it's not about technology, but it's really about how we create, how we develop, create a content for um, specific user needs. And maybe it's something that would appeal to me might not appeal to you or someone else. I'll go to some of my questions from the, from the audience. Um, and a couple of these you mentioned at the last part, but uh, We've got a question here. Are you planning any types of trials for this technology ahead of potential deployment to space? Um, for example, in, simulated, in similar isolated contexts to get feedback. And I'll add a question on there. If we'd have known what was about to happen to COVID, could you have actually used this experience as a better test bed? Yeah, definitely. So I'm... Um... Um, the majority of user research or, or astronaut research, um, because it's so expensive to and, and takes so much time and we don't have so many subjects, participants um, on the International Space Stations. Um, so that means in space, in microgravity, or um, we don't have anyone in lower gravities in, on the moon or on the Mars yet. Um, the majority of research is done on so-called analog astronaut missions. And those are sort of special environments, uh, sometimes in deserts or um, on Antarctica or um, in Hawaii or um, high on the mountains, um, for example, in Austria and in Poland. Um, uh, and uh, usually those uh, psychological uh, or teamwork or similar um, similar uh, research is done in those analog missions. So this is what we are um, intending to, to go. 
Um, some of these other questions that are coming up have an awful lot of acronyms in them. Um, I'll, I don't know all of them. Um, so if I get some of these, if we don't get the acronyms right, if the questions can re-ask them. Um, thanks for the excellent presentation. It clearly highlights the power of MS as a foundational future enabler, helping bridge the gaps of space and time. Do you see challenges relating to the sharing of models across EX solutions and beyond, such as suitability of abstractions, formats, and architectures? I'm not completely sure if I totally understand the question. Um, I might get the, whoever asked that question, can I get you just maybe to simplify that and I'll, I'll redo it. The, another question here is um, the, the human emotion data collection. Is that I, I think it's, it's a little I H-U-M-S um, from I-I-S-R-I. Yeah, so in terms of uh, emotions, um, we are teaming up with uh, our colleagues uh, who are specialized in that. So I would like to say that my um, expertise is mainly in museum and heritage studies, as well as in human-centered design. And uh, if you want to have more uh, information about this uh, in relation to um, really a deep dive into psychological aspects and emotions, I'm uh, happy to, to give you a context to talk uh, to them more. But uh, yeah, we are currently um, developing this and we are in the early stage of the project. Um, but the idea is to uh, correlate the data um, from the um, from the um, more psychological aspects with with uh, traditional or even in museum and heritage studies with uh, uh, user evaluations or visitor evaluations. We use a lot of um, qualitative data as well as quantitative data with with traditional methods such as uh, interviews and. Um, um, and the um, uh, questioners, but we know that this is biased. So uh, we want to develop um, uh, some sort of ways how we can collaborate col this with the um, uh, physiological data coming from wearables um, uh, using sense. Kaya, do we still have you? <laughs> Sorry? Sorry, you, you just froze there for a second. Okay. Um, did you uh, did you hear all my no. answer or? I, I think I had most of it, but you then just froze up. Um, there's a couple of questions that are very close together. Um, one is talking about, uh, are you considering comparing outside activity to confined space in a gamified extended reality experience? And the other question that is quite linked is, have you seen a technological way of providing um, psych, um, psych a, a, a human touch effect to people um, who are isolated? So um, we've, we've seen the effect of COVID of people who just can't experience that touch attitude. It, are you looking at that? Have you seen something happening on that area? Yeah, I'd like to say that um, uh, I'm really thank you for all these fantastic questions. And this is um, why uh, we like to discuss uh, these sorts of things, because uh, they we provide a lot of um, inspiration and uh, thoughts, how we uh, can develop something also for um, uh, as a spin off also here on Earth. Um, but um, yes, uh, we are focusing uh, mainly on how can we get engaged this rich content uh, that museums and heritage sector already has um, and how this could support uh, mental needs, emotional needs, and also identity needs um, of uh, people who are far away. So, for example, even myself, um, I'm a, mi a migrant from Slovenia living in Australia and uh, being so far from your own country, um, it provides a really interesting um, 
opportunity to think and to look back to your own uh, sort of home um, and origin and how, how what will happen with people who will be who will go further from from earth and how they will look back and how this content can then for example uh, help them to uh, better engage with the um, humans um, on earth well, obviously, the majority will still will still here. We're not all going, definitely. Um, and this this is the the, the key uh, the core aspect that we started with, um, and and um, providing this sort of um, uh, belonging um, through the, this type of um, content and connecting it not only to to mental health but also through uh, physical health, which we know that it's. Uh, super important as well uh, because of the muscles deterioration. Fantastic. Um, I think we've got all of the questions that are in the line. If I can ask one other question just for me, um, not long before COVID, the National Archives of Australia ran a, um, a, an exhibition on Australia in the space age. Um, fascinating exhibition but very based on the collection held by the archive so it was all document the documentation based um items when we're looking at museums and increasing stem participation and trying to reach out to people how important and how often do we sort of slightly miss our target audience because we don't actually reach outside our our current collection enough to really under, to give people a good understanding of what happens. Yeah, I think that um, museums and glam institutions in in general, as archives, as you mentioned, um, I think they the important they they have an important role in the society, and the role is to 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 um, answer the questions and to support the society on a higher level, provide inspiration, uh, provide, um, uh, uh, maintain our curiosity, uh, because we humans um, in the age of um, also in the age of robots and uh, uh, industry 4.0, when we're talking about how um, we might be losing jobs because uh, everything will be automated. Um, the question is how we are different from, from um, robots and from computers. And this is exactly that. We, we are different because we've got emotions. And um, I think that museums should, um, uh, should 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 communicate um, higher level questions, and some of them are doing this really well um, throughout the pandemic. Well, you probably noticed there were a lot of institutions putting up their collections or through virtual museums, engaging through social media, um, giving people sense of um, sense of identity or even um, lifting them up because it's not always about um, um, watching movies, played video games. Um, we all do this, we enjoy it, but sometimes we need um, uh, much more um, deeper content. Um, and I think that's, that's the core message. Look, thank you, Kaya. I've really enjoyed listening to you this morning. I've taken a lot on board and, you know, living somewhere that I can see a deep space observatory sitting on the hill sort of just behind my house. Uh, it constantly reminds me how, how important Australia is and Australian research and Australian researchers are to the, the discovery of, of the universe beyond our frontiers. So thank you, Kaya. Um, and on behalf of Simulation Australasia, it's been a pleasure to have you here. Uh, next up, we have the Australian Defence Briefing on Track 1 and Abstract Presentations in Track 3 and 4. Um, please click Agenda on your left sidebar and click the session you would like to attend. Um, thank you again. Uh, enjoy the rest of the conference.